Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE Dishwasher Rinse Aid Tank Kit. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the instructions, the cam, and the rinse aid tank. The rinse aid tank kit is located inside the dishwasher door. The main reason you'll be changing it out is that the body is damaged and it's leaking rinse aid. In order to get to the part, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to remove all the screws so we can take out the inner door liner. Before we take the inner door liner out, we're going to put a towel up on the countertop so we can work on the door liner without scratching the counter. With all the screws out of the door, we're going to carefully separate the inner liner from the outer door and lift it off. As you lift it up, you want to slowly let the door come up because without the weight of the inner panel, it's not going to stay open. Now that we have the inner door off and setting on the cabinet, before we take it apart, we're going to take a look at the instructions. In this particular kit, we have to decide whether we have to change out this cam. So you basically have to look at step three and find out what style you have on the dishwasher. If you have one of them with a chamfer that's 1.1 inches long, you go to step five. If you don't have any chamfer, you go to step four. And if you have a .910 with no chamfer, you go to step five. Same with these other styles, you go to step five also. So if you have the style that we have with no chamfer, you're going to have to change the cam and the tank. If you have any of the other styles, you can just go right to step five and you don't have to worry about changing this. To get the cam out, first thing we're going to do is take a pliers and pull out the locking pin. Once you have that out, we have to release the lever. It says to use a quarter inch socket to compress this, but it's kind of hard, so we're just going to use uh, pliers and compress it. Once you have it compressed, you can use a screwdriver to press down and release it. You might have to lift up on the door a little bit because the door is resting against the countertop. Once you have the tabs started through, you can reach underneath and grab the lever and the top and set it aside. And then we can lift the cam and the spring out, make sure you don't lose the spring. Once you have that out, we can take out the rinse aid cap. In order to do that, we're going to turn the door over. And you're going to have to support it a little bit from the countertop. All you have to do is unscrew the cap, set it aside. And then there's four little locking tabs that hold it in place. We're just going to compress them and push down in order to get them to release. Once you have them released, we can turn the door back over and grab the rinse aid tank. Once you have the rinse aid tank out, you can set it aside. and We need to clean up this area so we can put the new one in. Here's the old rinse aid tank kit next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. Now remember, we went over some of these instructions earlier. You have to determine whether or not you have no chamfer or a chamfer. And we also have a new style of release on the tank, so it has a wire form to release it. And then like we showed you earlier, before we took our cam out, you have to look at these pictures and determine which style you have and whether you're going to take it out and replace it or just go to step five, which is just replace the tank. Step six tells you how to put the spring in. And then we also have step seven which tells you to test the door a few times and make sure that the arm doesn't bind up. And if it does, you may have to trim your chamfer just a little bit so it doesn't bind on the wire form. So once you've read over the instructions and determined what you need to do, 
we can put the new tank kit in. To put the new tank in, we're going to line up the locking tabs with the opening that we cleaned up a little while ago. And all you have to do is press down on it to snap it into place so you get a good seal. Once you have it in place, we can put the lever back in if you had to take it out. We're going to lift the door up so we can put the lever and the cap in from the other side. Once you have the inner door liner lifted up, we can put the shaft up into the inner door panel and then we're going to rotate it to the open position. With the lever in place, we can lower the door down. We're going to put a pliers down to take up the space between the lever and the countertop so when we push the cam into place, we can snap it on pretty easy. Once you have the inner door laid down, we can line up the cam to go onto the lever. You want to make sure that the spring is hooked in here like this. And you can hold it with your thumb. And then you want to make sure that the little tabs on the shaft are lined up with these little cutouts right here. And that this end right here goes into the wire form of the rinse aid tank. Once you have it all lined up, you can rotate it over and snap it on. Once you have it snapped down in place, we're going to take the spring and push it up over this little locking tab right here. You want to make sure it goes underneath this little notch right there. Once you have it in place, it should put tension on the arm so you can move it back and forth. Once you have everything in place, we can push the rivet in to lock it into place. Once you have the rivet back in, you want to stand the inner door liner up so it's in its position that it would be in if the rinse aid was working. And then like the instruction said, you want to rotate this back and forth a few times to make sure that this side doesn't catch on it and it works properly. Once you have everything lined up and working right, we can turn the inner door liner around and screw the rinse aid cap back in. Now that we have everything back together, we can put the inner door liner back into the dishwasher. To put the inner door liner back on, we're going to open up the door and kind of hold it open while we grab the inner door liner and carefully set it down there. Once you have all the holes lined up on the inner door liner, you can put all the screws back in. Once you have all the screws back in, you can pull the towel out of the way and close the dishwasher door. Plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.